uh, it's not uh, I, I'm I like to, to, to say something about uh, romanticism and uh, enlightenment enlightenment uh, and romanticism are treated sometimes as a movement as movements as movements in in the history of human thought uh, political philosophical thought sometimes they are uh, treated as uh, periods in human history. I think, I personally, I think that uh, um, the Enlightenment period, uh, that's, uh, that's right, the, the Enlightenment was rather a period, a period in which many Enlightenment ideas, uh, the practical philosophies, as the Peter Guy, the histori historian of the Enlightenment period, uh, um, stressed it, that uh, those uh, philo philosophies were practical and the whole period is characterized by this Practic, uh, by, the, by, the, by this util, uh, utilitarianism, by this uh, practicality. So uh, uh, the Enlightenment was rather a period, and Romanticism was rather a, a, a movement contrary to this whole period. Um, uh, Enlightenment was, in a negative uh, uh, sense, was the uh, effect of uh, religious uh, wars and clashes in the in 16th and the 17th century. The philosophers now realize that they uh, don't have to talk so much about religious, uh, religious problems because they are unsolvable because of the dogmatic uh, approach to them and they can uh, concentrate on more human uh, things uh, which are also, were also uh, waiting for to be, to be done and arranged. So they uh, were discussing economy, so were they discussing uh, philosophy, they were discussing how the society could function and so on. They realized that uh, religious fanatism is uh, bad and so, and so on. And, they, um, the, and I think that both, um, both uh, uh, enlightenment and romanticism are not over. I think that we are living still in the era of enlightenment and uh, this enlightenment is fighting as it used to be it used to be in the 18th century when the enla enlightenment period started uh, it's still fighting the same old enemy and the same old enemy is of course romanticism so uh, uh, the, for instance, when we when we see, for instance, these two different problems, so two different eras. Let's take the example of uh, Adam Müller. Adam Müller was one of the uh, German um, uh, Romantic uh, authors and uh, thinkers, if you can say so about the period of uh, sensibility and not sense, as uh, Jane Austen would uh, put it. Um, the age of, um, by the way, Jane Austen was uh, a woman, uh, a, a representative of enlightenment, fighting the romanticism. So it's very clear, yes, sense and sensibility, sense against sensibility. So the romanticism, the, the romantics, they, they, they preferred to feel, not to understand. They preferred to be subjective, not objective. They uh, were doubting if the real truth, the scientific truth, is. Uh, in reach within uh, human reach, and they well uh, well thinking about that uh, feelings and emotions are more important than uh, rational uh, discussion. And uh, I think this uh, Adam Müller was of an opinion that enlightenment is more or less adapt. Uh, it's, it's good for the French, for instance. It's good for the French to have a separation of church and state, to have all these liberal uh, reforms and everything, but it's not good for the German national character. Today we see that after two wars the Germans were convinced that liberalism is something good. It was drastic, but they are um, finally uh, Germany is a more or less a liberal nation. But we see this, uh, this uh, pattern. This pattern between uh, that that was uh, also in in a case uh, today we can see uh, the um, also this pattern. For instance, uh, we are told by the postmodernistic uh, philosophers that uh, liberal reforms and the liberal democracy, and the liberal uh, way of, of of thinking of uh, of society, is not good for the Chinese who are, for instance, naturally authoritarian people. 
or they are not good for the Arabs. The Arabs are feeling better within their um, patriarchal, authoritarian, uh, authoritarian uh, societies, uh, if you can say so, uh, societies in the in nine nations which are divided into tribes still. But as you can easily see that those postmodernistic, and I think postmodernism is only a new name for romanticism. Postmodernism is nothing new, it's only the romanticism. Uh, romanticism, the, the, the new form, maybe, slightly new form, but only slightly, of romanticism. So of, a, of an ideology that is based on doubt in uh, in uh, universal ideas, in universal uh, claim that uh, you can provide happiness and good uh, political system for all people on the globe, in the, uh, of the globe. And uh, we can see this, this postmodernists, they think about the Chinese as uh, the men who cannot live in liberalism and the Arabs, but we can clearly see, and even the neoconservative author Robert Kagan, he have uh, uh, pointed that um, Huntington's idea about this civilization which, which are, have these uh, unsurpassable bounds and boundaries and you cannot uh, liberalize uh, other civilizations, that it's, it's completely false vision. Uh, Robert Kagan argued that uh, even the Arabs or the Chinese, but he was mainly concentrating himself on Arabs. He have uh, pointed out that in the Arab world there are many democracies, more or less liberal. Not they are not uh, perfect in that, uh, of course, but they are more or less liberal, like Tunisia, like Morocco, and so on. But they are democracies. So there's this is the element of uh, of um, of liberalism in there. And uh, there are also authoritarian, old-fashioned, tribal uh, monarchies and, and states uh, like uh, Saudi Arabia and Yemen. And they are the same people, Arabs, yes, the same people. In Morocco, of course, there are some Berbers, but, but um, they are the same people, Arabs. And you, you can take also the example of China and Taiwan. You can see them in Taiwan in Hong Kong, the same Chinese people who is so naturally authoritarian, according to Huntington or something, or, 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 or other uh, postmodernistic or neoconservatives. It, I think uh, Jürgen Habermas is right, is, is totally right when he perceives that romanticism is also a cover for uh, uh, conservatism, that postmodernism is not a um, progressive idea, it's an regressive idea, it's an, a contra-revolutionary idea. And uh, the only difference between the conservatism and uh, postmodernism, the traditional conservatism and postmodernism, is that uh, postmodernism is global. So you can see uh, that all those conservative cultures are supporting themselves against liberal democracy, against liberal reform. You can see that uh, uh, those conservatism throughout the world, they are trying to connect themselves and trying to fight uh, liberal democracy and also the authoritarian regimes that are doing the same. They are also presenting many uh, ideas about the natural uh, authoritarian character of uh, several nations, but they are all false. We can also see that uh, within uh, the Japanese society we have this Furita men, this free men, this men who cannot accept being humiliated every day by their bosses and managers in their factories and firms and companies and they want to live a little bit more like the people on the, uh, in the Western world and uh, more treated uh, equally, uh, more respected and, um, uh, and uh, dignified. So uh, we can see that postmodernism is only the new form of uh, uh, Romanticism. I, I uh, remember one conference um, during which uh, one of the um, lectures, uh, a professor and priest in the same time, he was praising this uh, postmodernistic approach. Of course he was uh, praising this uh, postmodernistic approach towards other cultures. But the, the, civil the conference was about the uh, cultures and civilization of the world. And uh, they were, he was praising those because the liberal democracy has limited the power of the church and has limited the mystical and the sentimental element in, in human history. And it's not good for the interest of churches. 
and especially the Catholic Church, which is the institution, a state and a power-ridden uh, hierarchy in the same time. So uh, we can see that this fight between enlightenment and uh, liberalism, which is uh, liberalism is the main representative of uh, rationalistic uh, liberalism, is the main representative of the uh, enlightenment virtues and values, is still fighting today against romanticism. So nothing really changed from the late 17th and early 18th centuries.